you see this video. Let somebody see it. One or more persons, please, please, let one or more persons see this video. So this can be for, and let it help someone. Let someone get saved. Let them repent. Come back to me. I'll come to you. If they've not backslid, let them get saved. Or let them come back to you if they have backslid. But this is all for God's glory. So, so yeah, I'm able to make videos now. I am driving to Chicago. So, I wanted to get on here. There's no time like the present. So, um, excuse me, guys. Put on my glasses so I can see. <laughs> I've got 1.5 miles and I have to make a left here. But, um, anyway, so, I'd like to tell you my testimony first and foremost. And then, I'll go from there. Okay, so, I was in Tennessee. My daughter was in Tennessee. I was in Tennessee. I was getting a raise in 2021 from a very good job that had great benefits, great pay. All the stuff broke out in 2020. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so all that broke out in 2021. I was getting a raise that very day. The Lord said, go back home to the house I gave you, to the home I gave you your mother. So I obeyed. I said, okay. I didn't take the raise. I took a leave without pay. Went home. Then the Lord knew I would draw really close. He knew I'd get in my word. Get in in a quarter way. mile, keep left to continue toward I-30 East. Then I would, uh, my GPS is on, so sorry if that interrupted draw really close so I got in the book of Revelation which is my favorite book by the way and godly sorrow brings repentance. keep left and I got I was I repented right out to the Lord and asked him to be Lord over my life all the days of my life now mind you I was raised up in the Lord train a child up in the way they should go when they get old they shall not depart I was saved. Continue on I-30 East for 26 miles. After so long, I backslid into sin. If you're not putting God first, the devil has room to slide in. And he will and he did. So I made it about me. <clears throat> I could say some more. This is not blaming this on anybody. I could say the truth about daddy not spending time and all that and then I'm like I don't need you know I'm with my children all the time and I'm happy long story short let me get to the point I backslid I wasn't putting God first so I had a boyfriend for over eight years off and on I've broken off I did not feel good sinning it was not good it's not good once you've been saved and you know the Holy Spirit dwells in you backslid into sin that does not feel good you know the lord let me. it just did not feel it felt horrible so you can have a moment of you know feeling like you're you know and you're okay that you're not good, so. so the lord said in 2021 come back home to the house i gave you to the home that i gave you I went home. I got in my word. Godly sorrow brings repentance. I repented and gave my life back to the Lord. Fully. Fully. Let go of everything. Not, not talking on the phone to no one. Strictly in my word and in prayer. Working with the Lord. It's just about the Lord. Doing God's work. And, and so... Uh, getting his message out actually on that job and uh so uh wasn't long the lord said she's coming to be saved i thought my son was coming first said, no she's coming first so she was not coming then she was coming then she was coming immediately this is my daughter 
So she came, just as the Lord said. And in that order, the order that he told me, she came. And within that time frame, it wasn't long, she was saved and changed. Now, I'd like to say she was smoking weed. She had fear none on her knuckles, tattoos all over her. But I knew that it was what I did that affected her. What you do affects your children. If you think it don't, you're sadly mistaken. What you do affects your children. God's going to make sure that it does. Because you're in sin. So, it affected her real bad. So, she was smoking weed. She was miserable. It, it was just not good. And then she got her tattoos. And so then I prayed. And the Lord brought her to be saved. And she got saved and changed. But when... Okay. I need to start over. But I'll go back just a little. When she, when the Lord let me know she's coming to be saved, He said, call the daddy right now. Tell him right now. I called the daddy. I didn't even hesitate. I called the daddy right when the Lord told me to call and tell him. I called and said, Danny, Olivia is about to be saved and changed. He said, Olivia, that would take a lot of us. I said, where's your faith in the Almighty God that sits on that throne? I said, you don't have any. But she's about to be saved and changed. And I'm supposed to tell you that the Lord wanted me to tell you ahead of time. So when it happens, you'll know I told you. And so it did happen, just as the Lord told me. And uh, she almost died in the process, but it happened. And she was out telling her testimony to everybody on YouTube the next day. And, uh, she tells everybody about Jesus now. The daddy can believe it. He was blown away. He's not saved, so I probably said that already. But, um, couldn't believe it. He was in shock. Like, what in the world is going on here? She's a completely changed girl. She was out trying to buy from the angel tree, and he, he wasn't happy about how she was, and then he wasn't happy about her when she was saved. He was... He's okay now, but he, at first, he was just, like, blown away. Like, what? So, anyway, now my daughter has graduated from the Navy. But such a beautiful transformation, and she listens to the Lord. She and I put God first now. When you put Him first, you have a relationship with Jesus. And when you put Him first, you better best believe you'll start hearing from Him. So, my whole world has changed since then. Her whole world. And I'd like to say that I love my son so much, too. And he came and got saved, too. So, the Lord sent him. Whenever she got saved, he got saved. But she was the one that had that. And the Lord knew she would get all these tattoos and fear none on her knuckles. And the Lord knew that she would use them. Everything I said, Lord, when you save her, I'll tell everybody this testimony. For his glory, not for mine. I didn't do anything. I couldn't reach her. But I knew who could. That's what I said. I said, I can't reach her. She didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus. But I said, I can't reach her. But I know who can. So, so right before she came, even, she was telling me that one of her jobs, people were coming to her about the Lord. But anyway, so... So I prayed, and, and Lord, the Lord answered, and it was amazing. And so then he brought my son, too. And in the Word, in his Word, he says he'll heal your land. And he means just that. If you repent and put him first, come back to your first love and repent, he will heal your land. And that's exactly what he means. But if you don't, oh, my goodness, there's a Bible verse in there. It's not good. So I knew when I repented, it wasn't okay for my kids to be unsaved. So I was looking at their young child pictures. Young. It was right there in front of me while I was sitting in the chair reading the Bible. And I was looking at them. And I was reading his word. Godly sorrow brings repentance. And it brought repentance. And I was looking at those pictures crying. And I said, oh dear God, look at these sweet, innocent children. And look what I did. You know. But he forgave me. And so I forgive myself. But what I'm trying to say. 
to get this word out on here besides going and telling people in person. <clears throat> I, I was telling them on my job, different jobs, and uh, whenever the Lord put it upon me, and uh, often, very, very often, more than not, so uh, just trying to get the word out because I knew in 2020, the Lord let me know we're at the very end. I knew, I knew what it was all about, and I knew that we were here, the end is here. The Lord spoke, the end is here, spoke to me, the end is here. It's not long before I come. And so, in 2022, I said I believe the raptures this year. Well, I believed that because we're so close, and I would never say the date or the hour, you know, but now... We're right here. We are going to digital currency soon. People, if you don't believe me, go look it up. And then, I ask you this. Go to scripture on everything that I'm telling you. Go to scripture. I will I will start including scripture because I plan on getting on here a lot. Not for likes. I don't even know if the comments are on. This is a brand new phone. That's how much I'm just out here to get the word out. Comments are probably on, but... The last, my last phone that, that uh, I can do a video on, uh, the comment, the last one I did, it said comments were turned off. I didn't even know. Because I'm on here, all glory be to God, if this helps anybody today. Okay, so when you give your life to the Lord, you believe on Jesus. You believe that he died on the cross. He shed that precious blood and God rose him three days later. And you know that you're a sinner that needs a Savior. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. You're a sinner that needs a Savior. And you just, you, you genuinely get in prayer and you say, Lord, I'm a sinner that needs a Savior. Please save me. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything you ask God, you ask Him in His Son's beautiful name. Son's name, Jesus' name, amen. Everything that we ask him for, he says in his word, ask him his son's name, and it will be given to you. If it's his will, and we want to ask whatever your will be, Lord. But when you get saved, you believe on him. You believe on him, and you'll have everlasting life. When you genuinely come to him, I'm a sinner that needs a savior. Be Lord over my life all the days of my life. I ask this in Jesus' name. I, mean, I repent. Lord Jesus, Lord, I'm a, you know, there's different ways to pray it, but not different ways, of course. But what I mean is, you come to God sincerely and you ask Him, Lord, I ask that you come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, and save me. I'm a sinner that needs a Savior. That's all you have to do. And tell God, I know that Jesus died on the cross, shed the blood, and he rose in God three days later. I believe this, and I know I'm a sinner that needs a Savior. Please save me. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I repent for my sins. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, once you really mean that and you're genuine, you're saved. You're saved. In Revelation, he says, walk in repentance, though. Come back to your first love. Put him first. Repent, or he'll take your candlestick out of its place. The Bible means what it says. I backslid, though. I was I was, I was, was raised up in the Lord. Train up a child in the way they should go. When they get old, they shall not depart. The word means what it says. I backslid, but I was coming back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, dear God, thank you. When you start thinking about it, you do cry. You know, God forgives you, and you forgive yourself after God forgives you. But you cry. He doesn't say you're not going to cry from time to time thinking about what you did and how long you didn't put God first. Because when you don't put God first, you're not putting your children first. You know, you'd say, I love my children all day long, you know. And if somebody said, you love God, if you're, I would have said, yes, you know. No, you don't. Not if 
you're not putting, he says, his commandments, keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So, I never, growing up, I don't know if I ever knew about really putting him first because I read my Bible every once in a blue moon or when you go to church. I'm so thankful that the Lord drew me back in. I repented. And I really put him first. It's different. You can actually have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. It's all the difference in the whole world. If you ever get a real relationship with Jesus Christ, you will be probably tearing up every other day because it's amazing. The things he has done for me and my kids, my daughter, he's blessed her immensely. He's blessed her and her whole world has changed. The minute she got saved though, she didn't have to go in the Navy, but she did, but that's another story. But the Lord used her and she listened. I could go into so much more detail, you know, when you go fast, you don't tell nobody about it. But like, she listens to the Lord about speaking to people, about witnessing to people, about everything, you know. And when she put him first, he shows up. He shows up for you. Like, it's amazing. It's the most beautiful thing ever. And so, um, it's so important to get saved right now. If you backslidden, come back to the Lord. Repent. Be ready. All I want to say is this is for God's glory. Everything that I'm going to get on here. I may get on here in Chicago and make a video. Just I love health food places. The Lord brought me all my knowledge about health food and juicing and all that. So, I may put that on camera too because I love health food stores and health places. And I want to put that on there. But this is all about really getting the word out uh, about the Lord coming until he gets here because um, time is short and uh, just look up what's going on. I believe in the rapture before the church. That's the way I've, I have um, read it in the word. We're not appointed to wrath. The church goes up. Then the tribulation starts. Then the Antichrist steps on the scene. And when he does, he's going to ask you. He's going to come up. Come on, he's going to deceive many, even the elect. And when he comes on the scene, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I don't want, I don't want anybody left in the tribulation. The pit opens up. Hell pours out literally on earth. Antichrist steps on the scene, deceiving many comes across like he's this nice and then he shows his true colors but he asks you to take the mark of the beast and it's going to deceive many and they're going to take the 666 on the right hand of the forehead if you're left in the tribulation don't take the 666 on the right hand of the forehead don't take the mark of the beast because if you do you're damned forever and you, you'll go to hell I'm not saying a cuss word. I'm saying you're damned forever and you will go to hell. Hell. Hades. Forever. And you'll burn forever. It's a real place. Heaven and hell. Paradise. Heaven. Oh, I cannot wait to be on the gold streets walking with Jesus. But I pray I'm worthy to go up every day. It says in his word, pray that you're worthy to go up every day. I pray that I'm worthy to go up with my two kids every day worthy to go up. So, if you're left, don't take the mark of the beast. It'll be told you, to, they'll tell you to take, the Antichrist will tell you you've got to take 666 in the right hand of the forehead. And if you don't, you can't buy, sell, lead, or 
some of them are going to have such hardened hearts that they're still not going to repent. That's what his word says in Revelation. Actually, I'm going to tell you this, and this is the truth. Revelation is my favorite book. I've always, before I even read Revelation, I was like, I started reading on it one time on the couch in front of my dad. And my dad said, you don't have to start on that first if you don't want to. You can, it might scare you. It's, I said, no, I don't mind. I don't want to. And I always wish I'd have been putting God first back then and really in my word and prayer. Because if you're in your word and prayer putting God first, you're not going to backslide into sins. But I had to go through all this. The Lord knew that I was going to go because of my testimony and then my daughter's testimony to reach souls for the kingdom. We're here to reach souls for the kingdom. Ambassadors for Christ. That's it. That's it. That's all we're here for. And I'll say this. Now, works can't get you to heaven. People think they can do works instead of, you know, getting born again. You have to be born again. It says if you're not born again, which is saved, truly saved, you cannot see the kingdom. And so, but once you love the Lord, you do do works. Because you go out and tell people about Jesus or whatever God tells you to do. You ask Him what His will is for your life. But you want to tell people because you love the Lord. You love the Lord and you don't want to see anybody lost because you know what they're headed for. And you want to pray for them and you want to tell them even if they shut the door in your face or even if they, you know, whatever they do. You know, the world's going to hate you. We can't be like the world because he says a friend of the world is an enemy of mine. I wouldn't trade my relationship with the Lord for anything in this world. brought me full circle. It's all for his glory. See, there's a couple other steps in her salvation that happened there, and I'll go back and talk about those later, but the thing is, he brought her, and in those few steps, she was saved and changed. Well, maybe I'll go ahead and talk about them. When she came home, she got saved. Going to this church that I'm not going to now, but and the, the Lord let me know they're going to have part in part of this, you know, get saved there. And uh, long story short, and, uh, but she, after a week, she thought, I'm still going to, this is true now. I can still smoke that. I might smoke it, but she always told me the truth and what she was going to do. I didn't get scared at all. She said, Well, I'm going to smoke it till I die. But, First, she was said, I'm trying, but so she was gonna get some, some and smoke it that night. And I had to go to work, and I said, Didn't worry about a thing. The Lord said, I got this, you know. Honestly, He spoke to me. I already knew I didn't get, I was just so calm. But I said, I went in her room before she got home, because she worked, and then I was going. I rebuked Satan up out of her room and out of the house. And I said, and I prayed at her bedside. And I said, Lord Jesus, let something happen tonight. She gets that. Let something happen. Go ahead and let it happen. Go ahead and let something happen. Take that from her where she can't do it again. She won't do it again. And she won't want to do it again. It wasn't three hours later after she got home and got that hours after she she called me and said can, can you pray with me mom I feel like I'm gonna die so long story short I prayed her chest was pumping out of her heart and uh, out of her chest it was pumping like where you could see it she started going down as I was praying with her over the phone and I ran home and put my hands on her and was praying going down and then we called the preacher and his wife and they were praying went down just and I mean, real fat. He was going down real good. And uh, she knew. She said, I repent. I repent, you know. And uh, she said, I'll be honest, that the Lord was trying to take that out of her hand. There was a force.
force there whenever she was in the room. And there's more to that. She got out and told In two miles, use know. the right two lanes to take exit 138A for I-440 East, east toward LR National Airport, LR Riverport. Reach souls for the Lord, the whole testimony, because every part matters. And so anyway, um, she said um, the next day she had said, Mom, I'm so glad. Not the next day, but later she said to me, the next day she was out telling her testimony, repent. Repentant completely changed girl, completely radical. People would say radically changed. She was completely changed. And she was out in the yard on YouTube telling her testimony. And so when, when we would go in the stores, people would say, I love your tattoos. People love the worldly way. And she, um, she would say, they'd say, I love your tattoos. She said, see, they'd go up to her and they wouldn't know they're about to get Jesus in their face. So, not in a bad way, but they'd say, I love your tattoos. She said, I don't. That's the old me. And so then she'd tell them about Jesus. But then she'd go witness when she wasn't working and all this. So, anyway hear from the Lord, and she still does. In half a she mile, use the right two lanes to take exit 138A for I-440 East toward so, LR National Airport, LR um, Riverport. She told me later, she said, Mom, I'm so glad I got changed. She said, got, excuse me, let me say this correctly. She said, I'm so glad I got saved. She said that. I'm so glad I got saved, she said, because I was about to start trying other drugs. She didn't get to that part. I knew that. I said, I knew that. Use the right two lanes to and take exit 138A. Today. The Lord let me know all this. I knew that when I came home... It Continue was for 10 miles. ...saved and my kids not to me. And I got on my knees and got... Oh, it was just really... I got on my pr prayer and I got in my prayer closet and got to pray. And so... Yeah, so it's such a beautiful thing. My son came, got saved the same at the same time. Came down and got saved. I prayed about it. And so it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm so thankful. I thank God every day. And so we're not supposed to put our son or daughter first or mom or dad or anybody, husband or anybody first, but God. God first. We put God
if I know what they mean and I know what I'm supposed to do with them and I know I'll tell you all about my rapture dreams later but uh, I had a dream about my brother it was very clear and, uh, so wow well, you know I'm still thinking on that dream I just had it so but anyway um, please be ready just please be ready if I could shake everybody and make them be ready for the Lord's coming I would I would shake them and say wake up Get your head out of the sand because Jesus is coming. This is not in 10 years from now. It's not. It's not. Jesus can, I know he can make his timing come when he wants, but we have to be coming back with Jesus soon. There's a seven year tribulation. We go up for the marriage supper of the Lamb and the rapture. That's the way that I've read it now. We're not here. We're not appointed to wrath. He says that in his word. So we go up for the seven years marriage supper of the Lamb while they're having tribulation down here on earth. And then we come back with the Lord. And all the signs are here. Look up what's going on with Israel. Look up Eric Stackelbeck. He is in Israel a lot. And he knows what's going on. You look up but what's going on with Israel, you'll know that we're right here. We're, we're right here. There's nothing else that has to be fulfilled for Jesus to come. And we're about to go to digital currency. Look up uh, Amur Serfati. Uh, look up. There's some people I love listening to. Um, you'll love him too. Watchman River. Um, Tom Hughes. Tom Hughes is a preacher. And he's always in it with people other preachers and Brandon Holstis. Um, I could go on and on and I will go on and on more. But I just wanted to give that today. Please be ready for the Lord's coming. Please, please, please be ready. I'm telling you. There's nothing more important than getting your heart right. Getting yourself ready. Repent on everything that you've ever done. Repent. And Repent for unforgiveness. Repent for every sin. You know, I even will pray to the Lord. I repent for all sin I know about and all sin I don't know about. And then, you know, if you know of something you did, come to Him, confess, and repent to what you do know that you did. He's just to forgive. But He says, confess it to Him. Confess your sins to Him. Repent. Use the right two lanes to take exit 11 for I-40 East toward Memphis. We'll get into that later. He's very anointed. The Lord is powerful through him. But uh, he 
is such a good, oh, I love listening to it. Yeah, so I'm very, uh, I get my, um, it's a spirit-filled church. The Holy Ghost is in the house, and uh, I get uh, fed there, spiritually fed at that church more than I ever have been. two lanes to take exit 11 for I-40 East toward Memphis. This is not a joke. You can say, if you know what, there's going to be scoffers and mockers. And if you say, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. Well, if you're left in that tribulation, you're going to say, oh my goodness. Use the right two lanes to take exit 11, oh goodness, then keep right at the fork to continue on exit 11B. to reach me and I was not listening. Because he tries to reach you through people. And he also will will come in if he'll knock. If you answer and let him in, he'll come in. But he's not going to knock you down to come in. Just please get a relationship with Jesus Christ today. It's Keep right at the fork so to continue on exit 11B. We don't have time left. The door's closing. Getting on Noah's Ark. They, it's closing. Continue on I-40 East for 121 time. miles. It is closing time. This is not to be funny. It's it's so serious. It's closing time. So uh, there's some more people that I haven't named that you should listen to. You know, there's broken people out here that, that are really good to listen to. Uh, yeah, there's some some more you should listen to. Evan Carey. Now, if you get on some of the videos, you might think, is no, he loves the Lord. He has such a heart for the Lord. And uh, I'm telling you, the first, will, the last will be first, and the first will be last. Be careful judging. If you've judged, say, Lord, I, forgive me for judgmentalness. Forgive me for being judgmental. Because if you judge, he's going to judge you. And he means every word of that. Well, I'm thinking about what else I can say. I talk a lot and I'm driving, so I'm on my way to uh, Chicago. Yeah, I'm going, going to, uh, got to go by and pick up my son, and then we're, we're going. I'm on my way to Memphis and then Chicago, so we're going to Chicago to see my daughter. And uh, I'm so excited. I haven't been here since she graduated, so second time. And uh, I cannot wait. And I plan on videoing. And at first I was shy about getting back on here because I haven't been on here in a long time. And then you be, you could get into your flesh, you know, and be worried about what you're looking for. Forget it, you know. I don't even care if I'm on here. And that you can see half of me or part of me. But I was. But the Lord helps you with that. When you get on here, you're trying to reach souls for the kingdom. That's all I care about. All glory be to God. If you're out here wondering and you don't know the Lord, say, God, reveal yourself to me. Please, if you're real, God, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. And I promise you, He will because He loves that. God doesn't want to see anybody perish. God gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is temporary here. We we look to eternal, eternal things. Keep your eyes on the kingdom of heaven. Because that we stand before the Almighty God. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say this. 
Yeah, Steph's coming to me. Lord, thank you for helping me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Keep speaking to me. When you get, when you die, if you die before the rapture, or before the, you know, before the rapture, before the tribulation, if you die tonight, where, how good are you with the Lord? Are you good? Are you saved? Are you born again? When you stand before the Almighty God, that's, that's a scary thought if we're not right. It's scary even if you are. You're like, okay, boy, oh my goodness, let me make sure I'm, you know, I repent, Lord. I forgive, Lord. I forgive. Forgive me for unforgiveness to anybody and everybody, Lord, please. You know, I don't I want to be pleasing in your eyes. I, I pray, let me be pleasing in your eyes, Lord. Renew me every day. Let me walk more like Jesus. Let me love, love let me love um, you more every day, Lord. So, if you die tonight and you stand before the Almighty God, is He going to say good and well done, faithful, sir? I'm not just talking words here. You'll hear this from other people, but it's true. Good and well done, faithful servant. Come on in and partake with me. Or is He going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Because if you don't have a relationship with Him, and you say, oh, I have a religion, or oh, I'm this, or I'm Catholic, or I'm this, or I'm that. But you you don't put him first, and you haven't repented, and you haven't got true salvation. Real salvation. Believing on him. Let him know repenting for all your sins. He died and shed that blood for our sins. To wash it all away. So, if you don't have a relationship, if you've not repented, and you're not born again says you can't enter into the kingdom unless you're born again. It's not hard, people. It is not. It really is not hard. Um, and watch Woman 65 explains it good too. There's verses in the Bible. John 3.16 There's um, there's a couple more. I'm, I'm going to have to tell you. I'm sorry. I'll get, get the Bible out and I'll get that back to you. But um, uh, believing on him, you know, believing on him, knowing that he is and he was and he is to come, and that he was here in the flesh, you believe that. You genuinely believe and you believe that he died on that cross and he shed that blood and God rose him in three days. And you, you genuinely pray and say, Lord, I'm a sinner that needs a Savior. I ask that you save me in Jesus' name. I ask in Jesus' name. God says, ask everything in His Son's name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're saved. If you slip up on accident, repent because you love the Lord. Once you once you get saved, though, you really get saved and changed. You want to get in your word and in prayer, and you want to, it'll keep you in the Lord. Me being in my word and in prayer keeps me there. I won't backslide into sin now because I love the Lord and I know what He's done for me and I put Him, I want to put Him first every day. Like I'm on here telling this, a lot of times we can walk by people and just like mind our own business and just like want to get on with her. If God tells you to go back and if you not, just repent and say, I'm sorry, Lord, I did not go back to them. But if he tells you to and he knows and you know he is, you need to go back and tell that person about Jesus. Because what are you scared of? When we get in fear, that's we are only supposed to fear God. What are they gonna do to you? And what if they do, you know, you're going to heaven. So we're here for the Lord. We love him, what he did for us. He got nailed to the cross, bled, shed that blood for us. For us. For our sins. Blood is what washes them away. Washes them away. So, the precious blood of Jesus. So, when you die, you want to know. If, you, if you're in confusion and you say, I don't know if I am. Get on your knees right now at home. You don't have to be in a church for that to happen. Get on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, cry out to him. That's what I did. When I came back to him, I cried out to him. It, it pays to tell the, the truth and stay humble. Not being, you're not embarrassed once you, once 
once you know that you know and you, you love the Lord and you, you've repented, you want everybody to know. That's what people really relate to is humbleness and and that you're real, you know. That's why they relate to my daughter so much. She's got tattoos on her and she's real, you know. They, they see me and I don't have no tattoos. I never got tattoos. I never did drugs. I didn't smoke weed. I backslid with a boyfriend and sin. Sin is sin. Don't matter if he murdered somebody and I'm over here cussing like a sailor or I'm over here doing this, that, or the other. Sin is sin. And also, I could go into detail about this. God is no respecter of persons. So, I'll say this to you. When you die, you want to know when you stand before him that he's going to say, Good and well done, faithful servant. Come on in. Come on in. And as Brandon Holstis says it, and partake with me, you don't want to hear him say, I never knew you. Depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, I never knew you. That's the scariest words you could ever know if you do not know the Lord. I pray that this reaches someone today. I pray that this reaches somebody today, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe you for it. Somebody clicks on this video. Because if you stand before him, you're not born again. And he says, depart from me. You go to hell. There's no other place to go. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody tell you that's not true. It is. And you'll burn forever. And God doesn't want that. Hell was meant for Satan and his angels. But if you do not, he sends people to come to you more than once to try to reach you. And if you don't accept him, I'm not sure if you're going to make it in the tribulation. If you've never heard about the Lord, you know, there'll be people get saved. But if you've been asked and you've been, God has knocked on your door a million times in the tribulation, you're going to be, and you're going to want to eat and go to the store and stuff. People are going to be deceived and they're going to take that mark of the beast to eat. Don't take it if you're left here. Pray and ask God, you know. They're getting, the government's going to say a lot of things. They don't want people to know that the Lord has come and got his church. I can go into that. That's a whole other story. I'm just telling you. They're going to tell you. Just don't take it. That's all I'm saying. Don't take the mark of the beast. They're going to say when you don't take the mark of the beast, they're going to cut your head off. This is not crazy talk. This is real talk. Go look in Revelation. Get in the Word. And God will speak to you there. God will meet you there. Get a King James Version Holy Bible. The reason why I go by King James Version ask God to speak to you about what I'm telling you too. King James Version Holy Bible is the real it's not been tampered with. Some Bibles you have to be worried about them being tampered with. The word's different in there. It'll be changed and it won't be right. Get a King James Version. I have a super giant print too so I can see it without glasses. I'm sorry. I sound like this. I got... You know, I'm not sorry that... You know, we say we're sorry when we cry, but really, God brings that when it's time for you to cry. You know, it comes at the right time. So, it's okay. But, um, anyway, I was, my nose got stopped up. But, um, I just want to serve the Lord and be ready for His coming and tell people about Jesus and point them in the right direction and get these videos out. You know, I had a lock on my phone before we put your code in, but I don't know if I'll do that this time. I don't care I'm putting it out here because if somebody finds your phone, they can see this video. If you've gone up in the rapture and they're here in the tribulation, they can watch this and say, oh, it's happened. We're here. You can't jump off a cliff. You Men are going to try to die. It tells you that in his word, and they can't. He's not going to let you. You're going to suffer.
suffer for seven years unless the Antichrist cuts your head off. And you hope he does once you accept the Lord and say, I repent, Lord. Save me in Jesus' name. He's going to cut. Hopefully, he will and you'll go into heaven. Otherwise, you're going to have to endure seven years. And you pray that God keeps you and hides you out and gives you food. And otherwise, you just want to go into heaven. Well, anyway... I pray and know that this is going to help someone today. And I thank you, God. I believe you for it, and I thank you, God. And once you ask God for something, and it be His will, and you pray and you believe Him for it, and you're not praying for your own in your own lusty ways, and praying for stuff that's not God's will, because if you're doing that, you don't need to be doing that. You need to pray whatever God's will be, let it be. Whatever His will is for our life, that's what we want to be walking in. Once you really know Him and have a relationship, nothing else is okay. We're supposed to be walking in His will and then everything comes together. Everything's good. It's for our good. He tells you that in His Word. God wants everything good for you. Yes, will you come into persecution and people against you? Probably. He said they hated me first because you love the Lord. But listen, God's going to bring you through it. He's almighty, powerful God. That's who you want. Bringing you through. You don't want to be out here. I'm so glad. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that I'm not lost and out here not knowing the Lord. 